ஆயுபோவன் வணக்கம் ஐம் பயோனி டிமெல் திஸ் இஸ் பாஸ்டன் லக்க நியூஸ் பிரிங்கிங் யூ நியூஸ் வியூஸ் அண்ட் என்டர்டெயின்மெண்ட் ஃப்ரம் பாஸ்டன் அண்ட் யூஎஸ்ஏ த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஸ்ரீலங்கன் டு வின் இன்டர்நேஷனல் பிஸ்னஸ்மேன் ஆஃப் தி இயர் அவார்டு இன் டெக்ஸஸ் United States urges Sri Lanka to begin a credible independent investigation on human rights. Educate Lanka, organization that empowers underprivileged students in Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan born businessman Mr Susanta Shan Cecil Chandra received the International Businessman of the Year award from the Greater Dallas Asian American Chamber of Commerce few weeks ago. Mike Rawlings, mayor in Dallas, Texas, presented the award at a ceremony held at the Western Galleria Hotel in Dallas, Texas. Mr. Cecil Chandra, the first native Sri Lankan to win this award, was chosen from more than 25 finalists, 25 Asian American businessmen in Texas on outstanding leadership and international accomplishments. He is the president and co-founder of Seahin's Link International Inc headquartered in Irving, Texas. Ashan, uh, could you please tell us about the International Businessman of the Year award uh, you won in Texas recently? First of all, I would like to thank uh, Boston Lanka for giving me this opportunity. Um I live in Irving uh, which is very close to Dallas, Texas. Uh, I'm a member of uh, Greater Dallas Asian Chamber of Commerce. which is the last largest chamber of commerce in the United States uh, according to the officials there are more than um, 50000 members in this um, uh, chamber every year they have this annual award ceremony and uh, they were looking for a uh, young businessman uh, who was not born in the United States born in Asia migrated to United States and established a business here then uh, take that business to international means Asia Africa Europe Australasia and then bring the revenue to united states as well as doing the social work and community work so they shortlisted uh, almost uh, 20 25 people and i believe uh, out of all those candidates they uh, decided to award uh, me as the best uh, uh, international businessman of the year so that is how um, why only they uh, they selected me for this award I'm sure you have come a long way as a, a businessman. Uh, could you share with us uh, some major milestones in your journey in America to become a successful businessman? Yeah, after my study at Nalanda College Colombo, I uh, got my degree from Massey University in New Zealand and then I um, migrated to the United States and worked as a project manager for some time. Uh, in 2003 i decided to uh, establish uh, sehins link international as a small company with another partner uh, this company we were looking uh, our, our expectation was to bring uh, one of the key uh, uh, products from sri lanka out of coconut tea and rubber so we looked at this opportunity in greenhouse business which uh, uh, we realized that coconut fiber was going to play a major role uh, in this greenhouse uh, growing as a greenhouse growing media so we established the company and then uh, it was very small we were looking for the right people the right time at the right place uh, then we managed to with the help of uh, uh, very friendly americans uh, we managed to establish rio coco brand first i think true sri lankan brand was established in the united states then uh, we slowly slowly started doing testing in different environments different countries for correct product for greenhouse environment as well as ecological restoration and the cut flowers uh, with the rio coco uh, brand uh, we managed to uh, slowly gain uh, customers around the world currently over 30 countries and uh, we're talking about ma- major milestones uh, i think uh, uh, after establishing rio coco the first thing was uh, getting the world biggest greenhouse complex under rio coco brand as a, our customer uh why this is important because they are the one who supply uh over uh, 2000 Walmart and uh, other supermarket chains in the United States for the tomatoes so that means uh, more than 50% americans consume the tomatoes grow in uh, rio coco coconut fibers and then we managed to establish a, a long research with the university of hawaii uh, ultimately we came up with a product which is uh, currently used in 
all the Hawaiian islands to uh, protect the coast uh, from coastal erosion. And uh, 2007, Sri Lanka Foundation awarded me as the exceptional, uh, uh, outstanding performance by a, a young businessman award. And then recently, the, this uh, International Businessman of the Year award. So I think these are the major milestones in my career as a successful businessman in the United States. Uh, what advice you could give to a, a Sri Lankan American who is thinking of uh, starting a business venture yet uh, having some second thoughts uh, given the uncertainty and risks involved? Yeah, actually, uh, it's a very important question. Uh, thank you for asking. I think uh, um, it's very important to have a plan and uh, uh, capital and you need to love uh, accepting challenges and then finally uh, taking risk. So it's like me, when, when I started, I have little capital, but I had a plan. And then I was looking for correct people uh, at that moment because it's it's a leaving an IT job with a huge pay is a very risk. You don't know where you're going to end up. You don't have your friends, your relatives, or anybody to help you around. So I, 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 I was ready to take that risk. Uh, everybody, my friends were telling me, are you crazy? But I, I, I was ready that moment because I knew this can go a long way because I had the correct plan. And then uh, with the right place, right time, with the right people. I had all these three happen in here in Texas. And with those those uh, people who was around me, especially I would like to thank Americans who were always there to help and not to put me down. And anytime I asked for help, they were ready to help me and, and guide me and where I wanted to go, what I wanted to find. And I think with like that, if you're ready to start one, you need to find all these, uh, uh, you know, what I just mentioned, the, the, the place, the, the correct people, and then especially uh, you need to ready to accept uh, challenges and take a risk. Thank you, Sean. Um, that was Sean Cecil Chandra from Texas. The United States warns the Sri Lankan government to quickly carry out credible investigation on violations of human rights during the liberation tigers of Tamil Elam war if Sri Lanka wants to take the responsibility to solve the issues related to war crime victims. Responding to a question at the Daily News conference, State Department spokesperson Victoria Nulan said, We continue to urge the government of Sri Lanka to do just that and to do it quickly. And we hope Sri Lankans will do this themselves. But if they do not, there is going to be growing pressure from the international community for exactly the kind of international action that Sri Lankans say they don't want. Few weeks ago, the US House Foreign Affairs Committee decided to recommend a cut in aid to Sri Lanka. Then last week, the U.S. moved for an interactive dialogue, setting the stage for Sri Lankan issues to be taken before the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva beginning next month. With all these new developments, some Sri Lankan Americans think that Sri Lanka is losing the PR battle. They question about the effectiveness of the patent box public relation company the Sri Lanka Embassy has hired to counter misinformation and to build the image of Sri Lanka among U.S. policymakers. It was reported in the media that Peyton Boggs has been paid U.S. dollars 35,000 per month over rupees 3.8 million a month with additional fees for any specific tasks undertaken. According to some sources, Paying that much of money was a total waste of Sri Lankan taxpayers' money and they pointed out that this public relations company's initiatives to win over key players in the U.S. Congress and other establishments have been a miserable failure. Founded in 2006, the Educate Lanka Foundation has grown rapidly in Sri Lanka, empowering the underprivileged students in Sri Lanka to achieve the quality education that they rightfully deserve. Educate Lanka also focuses on undertaking educational infrastructure development and supporting projects that improve the overall quality and the standard of the country's education. 
the foundation hopes to expand its mission throughout Sri Lanka by serving all communities regardless of their ethnicity, caste or religion. Educate Lanka consists of an energetic group of young people who are committed to offer their services on 100% voluntary capacity to help Sri Lanka. Let's meet this group. I'm a financial analyst. I'm an accountant. I'm a realtor. I'm an electrical engineer. I'm a software engineer. I'm a student. I'm an accountant. I'm an industrial hygienist. I'm a student. I'm a student. I'm a pharmacist. I'm a student. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm a software engineer. I'm a student. I'm a student. I'm a biotechnologist. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm a student. Boston Lanka now joins with its visionary leader, Manjula Disanayaka. Manjula joins from Washington, D.C. Manjula. As the founder of this organization, how did you get the idea to start this foundation? What was that moment where you realized, this is what I want to do to help underprivileged children in Sri Lanka? Uh, sure. So the story actually goes back to, uh, back to 2005 when the tsunami hit Sri Lanka. Uh, I was a senior at, uh, under, uh, senior at University of Maryland. And I was living with my roommate, Rashan Aminta, who's the co-founder of Educate Lanka. Uh, when the tsunami hit uh, Sri Lanka, we wanted to, we, first of all, we joined the community organizations. We went door to door and collected donations. But then we realized we wanted to do something more uh, rather than just collecting donations and supplies. So with the help of my classmates and some of the community, uh, Sri Lankan community in the Washington, D.C. area, we conducted a fundraising campaign uh, and a, a fundraising campaign called Wave of Hope uh, to raise funds uh, to help the tsunami victims. Uh, we started in January of 2005 and within six months we raised about $20,000 uh, through various fundraising events such as uh, dinner dances, cricket tournaments, uh, silent auctions, etc. And uh, we provided the funds to a housing project that was conducted by uh, my high school, Trinity College. Uh, they were building a village in Trincomalee. Uh, so we contributed the funds and uh, we concluded the project. And after that, we really, uh, uh, that really gave us, that was the first time we really got experience in giving back to Sri Lanka, a glimpse of what we've gotten. Uh, from uh, throughout our childhood and uh, growing up uh, back in Sri Lanka. Uh, through the fundraising events, we got to know other young students in, living in the Washington, D.C. area, Sri Lankans, and uh, we became friends and we wanted to do something more, uh, uh, start another idea to, to give back to Sri Lanka. So. A few months later, we were brainstorming ideas of, you know, what else that we could do. And one day, my mother, who's a retired teacher in Sri Lanka, called me and told me about this student, Manori, who didn't have, uh, who wanted about $100 to go to university. Uh, she was selected a medical student and she wanted, uh, she couldn't afford to move to Colombo and uh, achieve, you know, accept the offer. And she basically asked if we could uh, pull the money and send it to her. So we just we thought, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's a small amount. We pulled, you know, twenty bucks each, and we sent the money. And after that, we thought, how many other students, such as Manori, who go through this process, who go through, who struggle to uh, achieve this education that they deserve uh, in Sri Lanka? Growing up in Sri Lanka, we already knew some of our classmates who struggled to achieve this basic. Uh, education because of these additional expenses. So after uh, after finding out that there are you know so many other students who go through this uh, who struggle day to day basis, we thought why not uh, people like us who came to developed countries for higher education or for employment um, could easily help these students by giving a small scholarship or a small donation uh, that would give these students uh, the access that they needed to afford that education. So from there onwards, we thought uh, 
you know by connecting the students and the sponsors we could uh, create a model where we could provide uh, scholarships uh, for these students so that's how the idea came and we developed a website and in order to uh, tap into all the sri lankans expatriates who are living in other countries who are living in developed countries we thought it was the best it was best to create an online model where anyone in the world can sponsor these students and become uh, you know provide these scholarships so that's the beginning of educate lanka foundation uh, back in 2000 uh, early 2007 thank you manjula that was manjula disanayaka from washington dc that concludes our news edition we meet you again with another news edition of news views and entertainment from boston and usa till then goodbye